Okay, now let's talk about just the basic option strategies. Now, if you're bullish, you would be buying calls. If you're bearish, you would be buying puts. Let's just have a look at uh, buying calls. Now, what you see here is a payoff diagram, and it's very easy to explain. What we have here is uh, the underlying share is currently $4, and we've bought the $4 call. So that's the at-the-money call, and we have paid $0.25 cents for that call option. That's why on the payoff diagram, that represents a loss. The good thing about when you buy an option is you know what your risk is. That's the price you have paid, that's your risk. No one can come back to you later on and say, we want more money. So the price you pay for the option is the risk. To work out your break even for a call option on options expiry, you simply take the strike price of your call, you add the price of the premium you paid, which is 25 cents in this case, $4 plus $4.25 means that's your break even. If the shares and options expiry day are at $4.25, you'll get your money back. Now naturally, if the shares are significantly above $4.25, well, your option's going to be worth a lot more. And the good thing about a call option is you have unlimited upside potential. If these particular shares go to $10 and you own a $4 call option, you're going to pick up all that difference. And of course, your risk is already controlled in how much you have paid for that particular option. Now let's just go for a very basic example. And this is a way that would help you think about when you're buying options. Let's say XYZ shares, they're currently worth $5, and you have $20,000 that you'd like to invest into the stock. Now it's a pretty simple question here, how many shares can you buy? Well that's easy, you've got $20,000, they cost $5 each, you can buy 4,000 shares. However, you've also discovered that there's a three month $5 call option, and it's currently worth 28 cents, and you find out the delta's 0.56. These are things your broker can give you. Now, how many call options can you buy? Well, as you can imagine, with $20,000, you can buy a lot of call options. Uh, in fact, you can go and buy yourself 71,428 call options, but because we have to round to the nearest thousand, that means you can go and buy yourself 71 call option contracts. Now, you've got a lot of leverage here, and you've also put all your money, in this case $20,000, into an option position. Uh, that is something that you'd obviously have to consider very hard about. I would suggest that's probably a no-no, because um, if the shares go down in value, those value of those options are going to decrease quite rapidly. Now, on the other hand, how many call options should you buy? Well, it's quite easy to work out. You simply take the 4,000, because you could have bought 4,000 shares with your $20,000. Because you know the delta of the particular strike price of the option that you're wanting to buy, the $5 call, we simply take 4,000, we divide that by the 0.56, and that gives us uh, 7,142. Or in other words, we go and buy seven call option contracts. Now, this would provide the same share exposure as owning 4,000 shares, but there's a big difference here. Unlike you spending $20,000 to buy the shares, you've just come out here and you've spent basically 28 cents uh, times uh, 7,000 here. You've put an investment of less than $2,000. And if you think about that, you're only really risking 10% of your capital. Now, if the shares rise by 25 cents to $5.25, approximately what is your $5 call option now worth? Well, it's pretty easy to at least uh, guess what it'll be worth. Obviously, your advisor can tell you if that actually happens. But if our shares increase by 25 cents, because you, have, you just simply take your delta of your option, multiply that by the share price movement, and that means your option should have benefited by at, at least 14 cents. 14 cents plus your 28 cents means your option's now worth about 42 cents. So that there is your leverage. That's what's important. Now, let's say the three-month $5 call option has a, a, a theatre value of 0.2 and 20 days lapse and the stock price remains the same. So in other words, it will lose 0.2 of a cent a day. So if 20 days pass, we expect this option to lose really four cents. So if it's currently worth 42 cents, at the end of the 20th day, it should be worth about 38 cents. Again, use this as a very basic template. The key you need to take from this is if you are going to buy call options, there's only really two approaches that you should take. The first approach is that you decide on what bank you are wanting to use, and that typically means if you have a sum of money, you, uh, you decide how much of that you'd like to speculate with. If it means in lots of a thousand or two thousand or three thousand dollars, then that's fine, that's what you go and do. Otherwise, if you are considering buying the actual shares with your actual money, 
and, and then you can go back to the options market, quickly review the available options series, decide which calls would give you the same share exposure, and then you put a much smaller outlay into the options. You keep 90% or 95% of your money in the bank, and from a risk point of view, you've only risked that little amount. Keep in mind with that example there, if the shares that you bought for $5 actually dropped to say $3, you've lost $2. $2 times say 4,000 shares in that regard would be $8,000. On the other hand, if you just bought the call options, you're only down the premium you've paid. Whilst it would still be a loss, it would not be to the same magnitude as the stock. So they do have their benefit there. But what you need to be very mindful about is just how much money you actually put into these things. Um, that's what you should be talking to your advisor about. Quickly on this screen here, this just demonstrates uh, what uh, the screen a, a typical advisor looks at. Uh, we'll just zoom in here and have a look at a couple of things. Uh, basically, we're just uh, picking on News Corp in this case, and we're looking at the June option series. We can currently see, say, uh, the $13 call. We see the last trade was $0.80, cents, and we can see that the bid is worth $75 and the offer is $79. Um, it's just that a lot of private client uh, people never actually see the type of screens our stockbrokers use. That's just the still version there. Now, what do you say to your broker when you're wanting to trade? Well, to buy an option to open with a limit, you would simply say a command such as this. Buy five ABC November $5 calls at $0.10 cents to open. What you should do is have a trading diary and you should make sure you jot that down in your diary. Uh, that way you've got a recording of what you've said to your broker. And if you would like to sell your option, so you'd like to uh, close the position, you would simply say to the broker, please sell five ABC November $5 calls at $0.15 cents to close. That's the correct terminology you would use to give your command to a broker. If you'd like to trade your options at market, just substitute the word market instead of a limit and the broker will trade them straight away at the prevailing market price. Now if you're bearish, this is where you buy yourself put options. And this is the payoff diagram for buying puts. Now let's say our $4 stock is a share that we think is, well, it's going to go down. So what we can do is go and buy ourselves an at the money $4 put in this case. And the cost to buy that put is 25 cents. So that's why on the payoff diagram, that shows as an immediate loss as such, because that is the maximum risk to you, is what you have paid. Now to work out your break even in regard to a put, you simply take the strike price of your put, subtract the premium you paid, which is 25 cents, and that means you get a break even of $3.75. So if the shares do drop and they're at $3.75 on options expiry day, at least you'll get your money back. Now, of course, if the shares do drop in value, the value of your put will rise, and that's when you decide to take a profit on there. And uh, the put uh, profit is obviously limited all the way to zero, because the company can't go beyond zero. Uh, but typically, people, if they're trading, uh, stock falls in value, they buy a put for 25 cents, uh, they would obviously have a preconceived price on when they would get out. What's very important if you are trading options is not only should you work out, you should be working out your exit points. And they're profit exit points and also profit loss points. And you should also have a plan for how long you'll stay in an option position as well. Because sometimes if your timing's out, you don't want to stay there, you should look and move on. Just to follow on with this example, XYZ shares are currently $5. You own 5,000 of them. And you also have about $25,000 in your CMT account. You notice there's a three month $5 put option and it's currently worth 22 cents and it has a delta of 0.43. Now, how many put options can you buy? Very easy to work out. If you've got $25,000 and the options are worth 22 cents, you can go buy yourself 113 uh, put option contracts. Again, um, you would question why you would put all that money into an options position because that would have a lot of high risk. In reality though, how many put options should you buy? Well, there are two answers to this. The first one is you own 5,000 shares, so you just go buy five puts, you now have a hedge. On the other hand, you might not uh, want to just have uh, the five puts, you might actually want to buy enough puts that is actually equivalent to your shares at the time, and that's easy to do. You simply take the 5,000 shares, you divide that by the delta of the option you're wanting to buy, and that gives us 11,627. We round that up to the nearest contract, so that means you go and buy 12 put option contracts. Now it's pretty easy here in the sense to understand leverage. 
If the shares go from $5 to $4, that means they've dropped by a dollar, and um, you have either sold your shares at five, it means you're a dollar better off. So you had uh, 5,000 uh, shares, the stock's down a dollar, that means uh, you've managed to make $5,000. If you had bought 12 option contracts, however, and the shares go from $5 to $4, the options are going to be worth at least $1, aren't they? Because we know there's some intrinsic value, but if you've got 12 contracts, 12 times 1,000 means you'd have $12,000. That's where the leverage again comes in with options. Again, here's a screen uh, that a broker would look at in regard to um, uh, options and the puts. And we can see here, again, it's on News Corp for July. And uh, we can see here an at-the-money put option, say a 13.50 put. Last trade was 61, and the bid is 61 and a, uh, sorry, 60 and a half, and the offer is 62 and a half. Now let's quickly talk about options versus warrants. Now exchange traded options are often cheaper than the listed trading warrants. I stress often, not all the time. Warrants cost more because the volatility is controlled by the warrant issuer. Warrant issuers are there at the end of the day to make money. And the same fundamentals that apply to exchange traded options equally apply to warrants. Most warrants have what we call a conversion factor. The warrant issuers have this factor to make warrants cheaper to trade. Warrants settle T plus three, that means if you buy a warrant on Monday, you pay for it on Thursday. Whereas exchange traded options settle T plus one, it means if you buy a call option on Monday, you would settle that on Tuesday. Now to compare the price of a warrant to the price of an exchange traded option, multiply the warrant price by its conversion ratio and compare. Now, for example here, we have News Corp, and the stock is currently $13.37. We're interested in the $13.50 call option. And we can currently see here the market for those is 49.5 to 52.5 cents. Now, let's compare that to the same warrant that's in the warrant market. Here we have the News Corp June um, 13.50 call options, and we've got two of them highlighted here. Now, let's look at the first one here. It has a conversion ratio of four, and the warrant price is worth 14 to 15 cents. Now, it's quite simple. You take, let's say you paid 15 cents for that warrant. 15 cents multiplied by four gives you what? 60 cents. You now can compare that to the exchange traded option. The exchange traded option is worth around about 51 cents. So in that regard there, that option, that warrant would cost more. Keep in mind, you'll make more money from the options market because you've bought the option at a lower base. And if the underlying shares actually do go up, that will have a bigger effect. The warrant issuers would also uh, go and make claims that there's more liquidity in that, and that is true. They can ensure that their prices are within a line, but because of how they're actually trading these things, and because they're quite competitive against other warrant issuers, there are sometimes anomalies between the price of a warrant and the price of the exchange traded option. It's just a tip, don't ignore both markets, they both provide leverage, but it's a very simple test so you can work out which one's cheaper. Just to continue on with one other example, ANZ Bank at the time was $18.98, and we see that the $19 call is currently worth between 52 and 56 cents. What's the actual warrant worth, the July? Well, we can see here the $19 calls. In this case, there's two of them. They have a conversion ratio here of four, and we can see that the uh, prices range between 19 and a half to 20 cents for one warrant, and 18 to 18 and a half cents for another. Four times, say, 20 cents gives you 80 cents. So if you're comparing the price of, say,